Hunt, Texas, located in the heart of the beautiful Texas Hill Country, where the north and south forks of the Guadalupe River meet. Sitting in the western part of Kirk County, Hunt is known for its beautiful giant trees and rugged limestone. Hunt is home to Crowder Rodeo and Dance Hall, so join us today on our drive across Texas as we hear their story and connect you with this beautiful piece of Texas. And remember, that baby's coming from a Texan. Adios. Hey folks, welcome to Drive Across Texas. Today we're in Hunt, Texas at Crowder Rodeo and Dance Hall with Miss Tracy Moore. How are you, Tracy? Good. Good. Thank Wonderful you. Today. Thank you so much for having us. If you'd be so kind, tell the crowd, the viewers, the history of uh, the Crowder Rodeo and Dance Hall. Well, it started in 1925 as a fundraiser to build the Hunt School. And it lasted like that for a few years until the 1930s being held on an old wooden dance floor underneath um, a big old oak tree down in the pecan orchard next to us. And then in the 1932 flood, when it got washed away, it washed the dance floor away. So they built a small pavilion next to the old country store that they had across the road. And in the 1940s, after the war, uh, the oldest boy came home, Wilton, and decided he wanted to make it more permanent and built the rodeo arena uh, and the dance floor here with the cafe on this side. So we've been going at it for quite a few years. Been a couple Sundays, hasn't it? Tracy, you got a huge facility here. This is a 90-acre facility here. And uh, you told me off air a while ago that your, your husband's mother and father started this back in 1925. So, and I got fortunate enough to meet your son. He's up there getting the rodeo grounds ready for tonight's rodeo. And there's gotta be a ton of family involved in this deal. There is, uh, my son does run the rodeo. My daughters come in and help. Uh, I'm so inept at, you know, computer stuff nowadays and Facebook and things like that, that I ha they take care of that. Uh, they help me in the kitchen and things like that. And uh, then of course there's my husband. Uh, Bill, who's driving truck, and basically he helps keep the money rolling now, through here. Now, I've got something to ask you about Bill, you know, he drives a truck, but he don't, you know, you think a truck, you think an over-the-road truck driver or somebody around here hauling aggregate products, he's kind of got a cool gig. He, he hauls equipment for <laughs> rock and roll bands, and he's with and Hugh, yeah. Hugh Jackman right now, the Wolverine. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. That's kind of cool. Uh, yeah, he's been fortunate to drive for quite a few different bands from the Rolling Stones and uh, U2, uh, a bunch of different ones. Wow. And uh, hopefully, you know, right now everyone's touring, so he's real busy, so he doesn't get to come home very much anymore. Starting in 1925, I mean, that's phenomenal, it really is. I bet you've got some crazy stories of people that's, that's came back or been here. Uh, would you be so kind to share one of those with us? Yes, yeah, there's one in particular that comes to mind. Uh, we were sitting here on a Friday night and an older gentleman came in. He was probably in his 80s. And he came in and was very happy that we were still going because he had brought his wife um, back to us. He had been in the military prior to World War II in San Antonio, and his staff sergeant had a band and his fiddle player quit him. And this man played classical fiddle. So the sergeant went to him and said, can you really play that thing? And he said, well, yeah, I think I can. And he's like, can you play a two-step? And the man was like, well, I don't know about that. And he said, well, if you follow along, you're hired. And so he brought him out here and they played for a couple years before the war. And then he went home to Pennsylvania married his wife and had always told his wife that he was going to bring her back here. And so sure enough, see, I got all That's emotional. Awesome. <laughs> it's great. It's great. It's a touching story. So 60 years later. 60 years later. And um, he had brought his fiddle and wanted to know if the band playing the following night would allow him to play some, some music with them. And so he got up there on stage. I'm guessing the band probably didn't have a choice, did they? No. <laughs> no. That's no, awesome. No, my mother-in-law would have made them. That's awesome. See, and that's great. I mean, you're talking about 1925, a family business. Yeah. And think of the thousands and thousands of people that your family's entertained. Oh, yeah. See, and that's something to get emotional about. Because, yeah. I mean, it's a staple here in Texas. 
It is. I don't know it as Crider's Rodeo and Dance Hall. We know it in Texas as Crider's. I think, I think they know that probably around the world, yeah. Criders, yeah. That's great. We have what? so many foreign people that come for to camp counselors and stuff. And I mean, we've been in New York City and seen Criders t-shirts and yeah, That's all amazing. over. That's great. You know, it's something to be very, very proud of. Well, Y'all have done a wonderful job and it's always an honor for me and my band to come out here and play. And uh, I hear you got a pretty good band tonight. Yeah, we do. Yeah, yeah. Who, who world is we know. Yeah, what's what's the name of the band? Oh, uh, Pat something. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a good time. You know, I've got uh, just a couple more questions, and uh, kind of always piques my curiosity. You know, 1925. It's been a family affair, and you've entertained hundreds of thousands of people. And and it makes me curious, Tracy, as to. When somebody comes here for the first time, what kind of experience do you want them to leave with? You know, um, I guess just joy in knowing that there are still places like this that um, we've had some pretty famous people come through the door and we've had some honky tonk people come through the door just, you know, and they, they all get along, they all dance together, they all laugh and they just kind of enjoy the evening and to know that there's places that you can come and just kick back and you know we we follow some strict rules as far as we are a family place so you know we don't allow certain things that that are inappropriate for the smaller children and i just want them to go knowing that there's still a place that they can bring their kids teach them respect and still have a good time you know teach them how to dance. Too many families have gotten away from, you know, doing things like that. And I'll tell you what I what I see it as. You know, this is my second time to play here. And uh, like I said, I'm very honored to step on y'all's Gracer stage here. And simply because what I see is I see a family entertainment center that's steeped in Texas Southern tradition. And I want to thank y'all for that. Keeping thank you. Keeping the, the chivalry, family time, all the values, uh, like you said, teaching your kids respect, how to act around people. Yeah. And then coming here and acting like a, a gentleman or acting like a young lady and not being a, uh, a heathen. Yeah. You know, uh, so it gives them, it's just a, uh, to me it reminds me of a place of days bygone. Yeah. You know, I, my grandfather and, and my grandmother, you know, they were big coon dog hunters, you know, and we have the Wise uh, County Old Settlers Reunion, and they'd sit around there and pick and just talk, and the kids would run and play. It puts me in the mind of that, and I'm going to thank you for that, for keeping that Southern tradition alive. Thank you. Thank you. Because that is something I work very hard at. Yeah. Everyone says, well, why don't you do this, or why don't you do that? And in reality, I know that it needs to be updated, and things need to be changed with the times, but yet there's a nostalgia that needs to keep going and needs to be present here. You just I need think. to tell them this, you know, my daddy told me if it ain't broke, don't, don't fix, fix it. it. <laughs> and this ain't broke. Thank you. Tracy, thank, thank you. you so much. Man, it's a tremendous honor to be here and uh, we appreciate your hospitality. You. And I hope it's, we can come back 50 years from now and, and do another interview. Well, I hope so too. Or at least our kids. Uh, our children, yeah. <laughs> I guarantee you. Yeah. Folks, I'm telling you, if you want to bring your family to a family-oriented event center and see what Texas is all about. Next time you're down in South Texas in the Hill Country, be sure to stop by Hunt, Texas. Pull in here to Crider's Rodeo and Dance Hall. See a great band, see a great rodeo, get some great food, and I promise you, it'll do nothing but build memories for you and your family. Y'all remember now, that baby's coming from a Texas. An old memory, the critically acclaimed new tribute album from Dylan Scott features seven traditional country songs honoring one of his musical heroes, Keith Whitley. When you say nothing at all. The project includes Don't Close Your Eyes. Don't close your eyes, let it be me. Between an old memory and me. An old memory. And more, an old memory. The new album from Dylan Scott, available now on Amazon Music. When you say nothing at all.
Welcome to Tamales Mexican Restaurant. Our chefs are here every day at 8 a.m. preparing the freshest chips, guacamole, and pico de gallo from scratch. We take pride in preparing everything healthy and fresh. Our cheese is hormone-free, and all of our meals are chemical and preservative-free. We use real skirt steak, not sirloin or round steak, but the inside skirt steak, the real Mexican way. We'd love to give you a tour of our kitchen. For the freshest meals made from food with integrity, come see us at Tamales Mexican Restaurant. Y'all, this is Pat Waters. We're shooting another episode of Drive Across Texas and Vegas. We're in Dallas Fort Worth International Airport, and there's this store called Lick. Y'all follow me. Hey, ma'am. You got something I can lick? <laughs> oh, yes, we do. <laughs> How are you? I'm wonderful. And you Good. today? So tell me the deal about this store here, man. Um, this is our candy store, Lick. We have a, a variety of candies. We have German candy. We have old school candy. We have different types of candy. What kind of candy do you like? Chocolate. Well, we have a variety of chocolates right over here on this side. Oh, you do, don't you? We have this. This is just regular chocolate. This is our dark chocolates, and this is our white chocolates and our uh, licorice candies right here. Oh, that's awesome. We have a variety of candies over here. We got the gumballs over here, the gums for the kids. Now, where y'all based that up? At Las Vegas. Our oh, base, really? Our main stores is in Las Vegas. And we have different types of candies over here. The Tootsie Rolls, the hot. We get a lot of people to come in for the, um, the hot tamales. tamales. Yes. Well, I tell you what, we appreciate your hospitality. My pleasure, sir. My pleasure. Y'all come check out Licks. I guarantee there'll be something here you can lick. Come on down here to the store and enjoy yourself. Thank you. It's three seventy-five for a quarter pound. You don't have to get a quarter pound. You can get as much candy as you want. Thank you and have a good day. Remember, that's coming from a Texan. Adios. Adios. You're watching Strike TV Video Country. Call your local cable and satellite TV provider and ask about Strike TV. Quality service, catering, and takeout. Homemade food. Dutchtown Deli in Cameron, Texas is the family restaurant everyone will enjoy. Customers expect nothing but the best, and we aim to deliver. Serving down-home comfort food, delectable pies, and coffee as fresh as can be. Stop in at 412 West Battle Street, Cameron, Texas. Kerrville's number one ranked brewery. You'll find new taps each week. We are family friendly and your leashed pets are welcome too. Join us today for wines, ciders, and craft brew galore. Follow us on Instagram and don't miss a thing. Kerrville, a hidden gem nestled deep in the Texas Hill Country. It is the seat of Kerr County. It was named after James Kerr, a major in the Texas Revolution. Kerrville is known for its beautiful parks that follow the winding Guadalupe River, which runs directly through the city. Hey folks, welcome to Drive Across Texas. Hey, today we're in Basement Brewers of Texas in Kerrville, Texas. The building they have was built in 1947, and these guys purchased it in 2006. The owners of the Basement Brewers of Texas on my left, Randy. Got Mr. Doug here, the master brewer. Aaron and the doc down here, John. How are you? Randy's, I'm gonna kind of pass it down to you. We uh, purchased the building back in 2006. <clears throat> it was actually uh, not in use for, for a long time. And uh, we all got together and, you know, we liked to brew and we were all good friends. And so we decided we wanted to kind of have a place to brew at and to hang out and bring friends and family. And so back in, uh, you know, the early 2017, we started working on it, and Doug and Aaron did a lot of the, the work that you see here. They made this place as beautiful as it is today with, uh, with their, their construction company. And uh, not too long after they got it wrapped up, we uh, went ahead and founded this officially in December of 2017 and opened up, and, and here we are today. Well, the next guy here, one of the owners, is Doug on my left, your right. He's a master brewer here, and also a carpenter, sounds like. But anyway, Doug, go ahead and tell them about it. Your responsibilities here at uh, Basin Brewers of Texas. Um, my responsibility is make sure we got beer all the time. So, um, 
it's been hard. Like Randy said, we weren't really expecting to grow like it did. Um, we ran out of beer one day. We uh, we like to rotate our taps. That, that was one thing we did when we started this. We got we went with a small system because we all like different flavors and we can brew as many beers and different flavors as we want. Probably we're probably done. I would say we're 50 beers since we opened. Awesome. Um, different stuff. So we all each like a different flavor and. Everybody kind of brews their own thing, so it's it's been a lot of fun doing that. That's so. awesome. So, Aaron, what is your responsibilities here? Well, uh, I brew a little bit and then basically keep the house beers rotated and what needs to be carved and caked and everything. Cool. And that's basically it. Good deal. Good deal. John, what do you do here? Everything else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, you know, I do the website. I do uh, get into involved in marketing, and, and um, uh, what he already said, we all have our own interests in, in beers, and so we all brew. We all brew, and it's fun because uh, we we, uh, we don't criticize each other's styles or, or methods, and we bring versatility to the public, and, and uh, it's been nice like that. So that's all. Okay. That's great. Folks, I'm telling you, your next drive across Texas, you're rolling to Kerrville, Texas. You need to stop by, see Randy, Doug, Aaron, and John at Basement Brewers of Texas, right here in Kerrville, Texas. Pull your butt up to the bar and get you a cold beer. Y'all remember now, that baby's coming from the Texas. Adios. Hey folks, welcome back to my hometown edition of Drive Across Texas. I'm your host, Pat Waters, with, with Mrs. Wendy Johnson here. And you know me and the Drive Across Texas crew, we like to geocache. This is where actually Bridgeport was started. We're on 920, and right here at the Trinity River is where they put the, uh, the tow road to get into Bridgeport. And uh, if you were hauling, hauling cattle or produce or whatever, you had to go through this uh, tow road to get to Fort Worth or the Metroplex. So we were geocaching, and Wendy said there happened to be a micro geocache on this old historic sign, right? Yeah, there is. There's a there's a micro cache, which is an actually a really tiny cache. Um, it's probably magnetic, hiding somewhere around here. It says that we're like one foot within, within one foot. So it's got to be here somewhere. You see something that just kind of doesn't belong. Oh, there it is. There it is. So it's a little bitty magnetic, and we'll open it up and, and Basically, this is just a log that you sign. Yeah, no room for swag in here because yeah, it's, it's so just tiny. real little bitty, and you can see this. It's been rolled up, and and uh, there's some signatures on it. it. Looks like the last signature was February 121. The first. Is there a what is February that? February the first. That's January 29th. But there's a February first of what? 18. 2019. 19. So there's been somebody out here this month. So. Anyway, y'all follow us on Drive Across Texas and we'll find a lot more of these little treasures across our great state. Y'all remember now, that's coming from a Texan. Adios. Angelita Vineyard and Winery, a small boutique winery located in Angus, Texas in Navarro County's first and only vineyard and winery. Stop in for wine tasting, yoga classes, live music, or just to say hello. You'll be sure and find great wine and new friends. Check them out at angelitavineyard.com. Corsicana, Texas, located in Navarro County, boasts roots in Wolf Brand Chili, Lefty Frizzell, and Billy Joe Shaver. This bustling community has history on every corner, 
and friendly people who want to tell you all about it. You know, folks, you can't go wrong with the drive across Texas to this great little Texas town. And that's coming from the Texas. Hey folks, we're here at Angelita Winery with Beverly, the owner, and she's going to tell us a little bit more about what they do here in the tasting room at the winery. Well, our tasting room is open Thursday through Sunday, uh, noon to six in the winter time, and then uh, noon to eight on Saturday and Friday night during the spring and summer hours. Um, we have all sorts of different events that we're doing now. Um, we have live music every weekend. Uh, we're trying to do uh, every Sunday afternoon at least or Saturday evenings about the third Saturday of every month we have a house band that comes in and we also provide a dinner um, we have yoga as well Very fun. and we've done some dinners in the vineyard we've also partnered with some uh, chefs in Dallas and we'll be doing some uh, wine paired dinners as well we have done some private dinners for people for their anniversary here in the wine tasting room um, baby showers and so forth. So Beverly, we're down here today for the Harvest Festival. You guys do this once a year. So tell us, what is that? What is it all about? It is the craziest, busiest time of the year. <laughs> we start out early in the morning. Um, we have breakfast. Uh, we meet up about 7.30 because we want to try and beat the heat. Once everybody's here and, and have had enough coffee and their bellies are full, we head out into the vineyard. We explain a little bit about the vines, the kinds that we have and um, how we can actually pick those grapes. Once we get enough of the bins full from picking, we bring them to the back and we start up the equipment. So we have a destemmer that they first go into and that takes all the grapes off of the stems um, and puts them into another tub. From there they go into a press and the uh, water pushes this bladder out and squeezes all the juice out of the, the grapes themselves. That goes into another bin and then from there it goes into a tank and when it's, once it's in the tank, that's when it'll start the fermentation process. But you can uh, try the free run juice coming off of the press and see what they, they taste like straight off of the vine. And then you can come inside and see what the wine tastes like when it's been all processed. Mm -hmm. And okay. know that you have taken uh, participated in that. Very nice, very nice. It's a lot of fun. It's, well, I'm telling you, all the people, we've seen like people milling around and talking to people and all the fun. And, I'm just excited to see all this stuff that y'all have going on out here. It looks like a really cool process. I have to ask you though, were you really excited whenever you started this that you figured out you didn't have to pick each individual grape? <laughs> you know, there that was a machine forever. that did that for you? So. No, actually we, we do a lot of stuff here by hand. Um, the bottling process, it, we do it one bottle at a time. Mm -hmm. Everything here is with love. We are a boutique winery. We would like to provide small batches of really good wine. So, uh, every, like I said, everything's done one bottle at a time. So we hand label the bottle. This is put on by hand. The foil is put on by hand and it's filled one bottle at a time. So everything is done with love here at Angelita Vineyard. And like I said, we'd rather do small batches of good wine than to mass produce an average tasting wine. And you do a lot of this yourself, right? We do. This is kind of your baby where you're like hands on with everything? Yes, yes, very much very so. Nice. So, you know, we did the label design, um, Angelita Vineyard logo um, was my idea. And, uh, you know, we just, uh, we're trying to provide a little bit for everybody. So we have everything from a really super dry wine to sweet wine, a red chilled, red dry, uh, red blends, which are one of our red blends that we did has been aged in oak barrels for four to five years. And it just won a gold medal at, at an international competition for Texas and a silver medal for uh, limited production. Nice. So we're very proud of that. Yeah, y'all have a lot of award winning wines around here. We do. So. In fact, every year that we have entered our Blanc de Bois into the International Lone Star Wine Competition, we have brought home at least one bronze medal. Mm -hmm. And that's from the grapes grown here on our property. So you were telling me about the label and you actually designed the labels that you put on the bottles and I know that there's a special story behind that. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, uh, Angelita was, uh, the winery is named after my late mother-in-law. She passed away the month that we had started to plant the vineyard. Mm -hmm. She was a very inspirational woman. Her name means little angel in Spanish. But uh, she was very inspirational. She had a lot of adversities growing up and she always felt that those things don't define you. Um, some of these ad ad adversaries that people would have would um, immobilize some people, but she, like I said, she felt that they did not define who you are and that you can overcome any obstacle that you have in your life. 
So in the third grade, she quit school to go to work in the fields to help provide food for her family. She taught herself to read and write by going to the library every week and getting a stack of books. Um, in fact, she instilled that love of reading into her children and Rodney, the resident winemaker here, has learned everything about the winemaking process that he uses from reading books and articles. Um, but she always wanted to be a nurse and at age 42 she got her GED, entered into nursing school and became an ER nurse. And so like I said, she's a very inspirational woman. Uh, I knew her for a couple years before she passed and um, she was a little angel. But you we, guys have a lot going on. We do, we do. We try and uh, provide something for everybody. Very cool. I noticed over there on the wall that you guys are a Go Texan member. We are. We are a Go Texan oh, member. Cool. We, we love like showcasing people that are part of that program. It's a great program to showcase Texas products and things. So we're excited to yes. see that. So yes. very we're nice. We're excited to very participate nice. in that. Yeah, very yes. cool. So um, tell us a little bit more about like the wines itself, how you got into it and what you do here at the winery. It, you know, we started the vineyard and um, during that time I was out of work with a shoulder injury and I had some time to go around to different wineries in Texas and I had no idea the industry that was here. I saw that it was a booming industry and I love wine and we, you know, we were started the vineyard and I went to my husband and I said, you know, I think I'd really like to have a winery. Um, I'm a flight attendant, I love to work in first class, do that first class service. Um, I also love to cook and I uh, had a business when I was 19. I always wanted another home-based business but had no idea what I wanted to do. And it just seemed like it was the perfect home-based business with the vineyard right here on the property. And so I went to him and I said, um, can I steal half of your building and let's start this winery. And, and uh, he actually did the complete build out for us. He did the framework and the plumbing, the electrical. We hired somebody to do the, the uh, drywall and then I decorated it and did the faux finish on the walls and on the flooring. And, uh, and here we are. So that took about a year or so to get that into fruition. Um, but we're excited to be here. You guys have a lot going on. It's a great place. So we, do. Cool. we do. Thank you so much for we sharing do. that with us. Thanks for having us out, for having us as part of this day. We're really excited to see everything here and be a part of it. So I'm telling you folks, whenever you're driving across Texas and you're coming down I-45, you want to definitely stop in. Come down and find the Angelita Winery. Meet Beverly and her staff here and, and just take part in all the fun activities they have and taste some of the great award-winning wine they have. You definitely won't be sorry. Drive across town.